Hi fourth grade, we're going to finish our project today. So what I'm going to need you to do is I'm going to need you to pull out this picture that you guys made last month, which I told you to save. And today's project is going to be drawn on a separate paper, cut out and glued over this. So you will need our space picture because I want you to show me how you can take the objects that we create today and, and show me exactly where they should be placed in space. So the things we're going to talk about for this project are form and value and then we're going to do another space review. So we're going to focus on those three elements form, value, and space. And I'd like to start with value. Value, if you remember, we started talking about value in first grade and we practiced using pencil pressure to create different values. So you could go from very dark to very light and our lightest value, if you remember, is white. So value is the lightness and darkness of color or if you remember from second grade, we talked about shadows and highlights. Those are also different words for different kinds of value. So value is going to be our very first element that we talked about for this project. And then we're going to learn how to take two-dimensional shapes and turn them into 3D forms. And this is just one 3D form I'm going to show you how to draw. You're going to learn how to take a two-dimensional shape and how did I make that into a 3D form? Well. I added value. So when you add value, you can take something that's flat and make it appear like it is three-dimensional. And if you remember from last year, form is anything that is 3D. It is not a flat shape, but it would be a more of like a 3D object. So a cube, a rectangular prism. We're going to talk more about that as well. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about space and how to show space, deep space, more tricks for showing deep space on a really flat surface. And spoiler alert, it has to do with placement on the paper and the size that we draw things. So go find your artwork from last month if you haven't finished it or or you might have lost it, then you might need to get that done before you can do this assignment. Or if you lost it and you're not willing to redo it, you can always redo it. The other option is to go back into Google Classroom, print it, and then you can take today's assignment and glue it on top. So if you didn't upload it to Google Classroom, that might be a little bit of a problem. Check your sent email folder if you emailed it to me. If you have not completed the assignment, please go and watch that video from December, complete that assignment, and then do this one. Okay? So let's get started. Okay, fourth graders, as I said before, we're going to focus on three elements of art. We're going to talk about form, which are 3D shapes or figures, value, the lightness or the darkness of a color, like shadows and highlights, and space. Space is the area in between, around, above, below something or in a picture. So these are some forms and a form is a three-dimensional or 3D shape. It has height, depth, and width. Some examples of forms are cone, a cube, a sphere, a pyramid. I like to also include the rectangular prism. And forms can be actual or implied. What does that even mean? Actual forms are actual objects, things you can pick up, turn around, look on all sides, walk around it, throw it across the room. And an implied form would be like a picture or a photo or a drawing of something, something that's actually flat but appears to be 3D. So you were creating that illusion of depth. Actual forms are really 3D objects. And implied forms are really 2D pictures that look 3D. I want to think about, are all forms even considered art? Do these pictures on the screen actually count as art? Or do we have to do something more with them to make them into art? What do you think? And wait a minute, is that value? Well, value is the lightness and the darkness of a color. It can provide visual interest and create a mood, but more importantly for this project, it can also help us to indicate space by using light and shadow. 
value is what makes this a form instead of just a flat circle. So we can see all those different shades of black and white from very, very dark to lighter and lighter and lighter to the lightest value, which is white. Value is being used in this picture to make the 2D shapes appear to be 3D forms. Are they actual objects that I can pick up off the paper? No, of course not. But the artist did such a great job that they made it look like they would be three-dimensional. With careful shading and placement of highlight and shadow, the artist made implied 3D forms. And if you notice, the shadows are all on the left side and the highlights are all on the top right side. That tells me something important, that the, the light source is up in the top right corner. Value is an important tool to show depth. Anything 3D will have a highlight and a shadow. Look at your hands right now. Can you find highlights and shadows on your hand? Of course you can, because your hand is 3D. If you look at your pencil or crayon, they are three-dimensional, and you can find highlights and shadows on them as well. Our last element is going to be space. Space can be created using size, placement, and overlapping images. This is a really fun picture by Victor Vazzarelli, a famous artist from the 1960s, and he created space by changing the size of the circles. The smallest circle appears to be far away. That's that illusion of depth again. The larger circle appears to be super close to us. So he created space by changing the size of those circles. If you were to look out the window right now, something super far away from you would appear to be very, very small. But we know that in fact it isn't shrunk, it just appears that way. This is also a famous artwork by Bridget Riley. She created space by placing the point that is the farthest away high up on the paper. We call this the background. Things that are far away in a picture are higher on the picture. The area that's the closest in this picture is at the bottom of the paper, and we call that the foreground. This should be ringing some bells because we did talk about foreground background in second grade. The area in between the foreground and the background is in the middle of the paper, and we call that the middle ground. So we have foreground at the bottom, things are close and things are large. Middle ground is in the middle, things are medium and things are medium size in the middle of the paper. And we have the background high up on the paper, things are tiny and things are far away. How do you think space enhanced this artwork? Do you think it makes, it makes it better or worse taking these stripes and creating the illusion of space with them? Do you think space is even necessary in art? All right, let's get started. For this assignment, you are going to need your project from last week. If you have not completed it, you need to go back to the December project, complete it, upload it for a grade, and then have it ready to add to it for this week's assignment when we complete the project. If you have thrown out your assignment or you lost it, then I would like you to please either redo it or go into Google Classroom and print out a copy of it so you can add today's piece on top of it. I did say several times and I wrote in the description that it was important to save this project. So moving forward, please make sure that you always pay attention to those comments and please make sure that when in doubt, just save your work. We will probably need it again in the future. If you emailed me the work instead of uploading it to Google Classroom, then I suggest looking in your sent email folder to find the document, um, a picture or the document and to print it out. And if you can't find it there, this is a reason why we want to um, upload things into Google Classroom as much as possible. Reach out to me and I will try to find it on my end and send it back to you. Okay, so if you need to pause the video to go and find this, you can, but before you go, I just wanna to talk to you about other materials that we'll need. We'll need a blank piece of paper. It can be white or a light color. We can use a, a pencil. You can use uh, several options for adding color. Um, but a pencil is the bare minimum. You could do the whole thing in pencil if you want to. 
Um, you will need scissors and glue, um, at least scissors. We can, we can um, work around not having glue. Colored pencils can work, crayons can work, or chalk can work. Or you can use a combination of those. Um, but if you don't have any of those, a pencil will work just fine. So let's pause the video and come back with your materials. Next, I'm going to show you how to start with two-dimensional shapes and turn them into 3D forms by adding value. You are going to need to have at least four objects to put into your picture, but they need to be different sizes. So you're going to want to have large, medium, and small at least, plus one other, or you can feel free to add more than that. The forms I'm going to show you how to draw are going to be a rectangular prism. I'm going to show you how to do a cube, and I'm going to show you how to do a cylinder, a cone, and a sphere. Um, also, we have a pyramid or a triangular prism. But to start off, let's start with our two easiest forms, and that's going to be our sphere and our cone. Okay, so our sphere is simply going to start with a circle. And then, oh boy, we're going to add value in order to make the sphere look three-dimensional. Again, you're going to need it in the three different sizes, large, medium, and small. But here, I'm just going to show you how to make them in one size. For our cone, and your, uh, your cone would be like without the base here, um, your cone is gonna start off easy enough. It's gonna start off with the top of a triangle, and then we're gonna connect the bottom of those, tri those triangle sides with a smiley face line, so it's a curved line. So if you can see on here, not here, but here, that's a curve. Um, it's a little bit tricky to see with that object. If I'm going too fast, please just pause the video, rewind it, watch it again. But a circle is simple. That, that is um, something I really suggest everyone does. And then the cone, start with a point, do the top of a triangle, and then curve, okay? The next form we're gonna draw is the cylinder. And so what we're going to do in order to draw the cylinder is we're gonna start with what's called an ellipse. It looks almost like a pancake. And on the sides of the ellipse, we're gonna need to do two vertical lines and at the bottom of those vertical lines we're going to connect it with the same curved smile line that we have for our cone okay so we have our circle which will become a sphere cone cylinder and then we have our pyramid or triangular prism so for this object we're going to start with a dot at the top and we're going to do one two three diagonal lines down and then just connect them at the bottom okay and then our last two are our trickiest ones we have our rectangular prism and we have our cube so for the cube you will start with a square okay and then we're gonna think about this corner of the paper up here. And for this, this, and this corner, so opposite, on the same side as the two of the corner that we're heading to, you're gonna draw a diagonal line. So this is the top right-hand corner. We're gonna draw from this corner, this corner, and this corner, so not the bottom left corner. We're gonna draw a diagonal line heading to the top right corner. And then this is a vertical line. We're gonna connect this with a vertical line. This is a horizontal line. We'll collect, connect that with a horizontal line. Same thing is gonna be true for our rectangular prism, okay? Except for we are going to start with, you guessed it, a rectangle. And it may be a good idea to use a ruler for this as well. So we're going to again think about that top right corner and we're going to draw diagonal, diagonal, diagonal from the three corners closest to the top right corner. So not the bottom left. This is vertical, so we're gonna connect these with a vertical. This is horizontal, we'll connect these with a horizontal, okay? So there you have it. We have our sphere. We have our cone, 
our cylinder, pyramid, cube, and rectangular prism. In order to make these shapes have value, you're going to take whatever color you want to use, and I'm just going to use black, and you're going to decide which side will have the highlight and which side will have the shadow. And I suggest each one of your objects should be the same. So if you look at mine, all of my highlights are on the same side and all of my shadows are on the same side. And again, it's a good idea to do shapes or forms in three different sizes, which obviously I did not do. So I'm going to add in a really large one. I'll add in a really large cone so that I can use that in my final picture. So I'm going to make this my dark side and this my light side. So if this is my dark side, then that means I am going to use value, which you may remember is shading from very dark to very light. And our lightest value is white. So I'm going to use value to shade very dark using many layers and pencil pressure. And I can also make this into a, what we call a shade by mixing black with a color. But I'm gonna make mine totally a shade by just making mine black. And this is gonna be my highlight. So if I were doing it in color, I could mix this with white and we would call that a tint. But since my highlight is white, I'm not gonna mix it. But anytime you wanna make a value lighter or darker, you change your pressure, you change the amount of um, layers you put, and you can mix black to make shades and tints to make highlights. White to make tinted highlights. Okay, so for the sphere, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm doing a shadow on one side and a white highlight on the other. And I have a dark value, a medium value, and a white value. Same for the, for the cylinder. All my shadows are on the same side. My pyramid, my shadow is gonna be this whole entire triangle. And then I'm gonna add my medium value here and my highlight right there. Same with my other two prisms, my rectangular prism, dark value here, medium value, lightest value. So this is how we use a value to create 3D forms. Okay. When you finish that, you will carefully cut these out. And I want you to remember that when you're cutting something round, you want to turn the paper, not your scissor, to make sure that you get a nice round shape. After you cut out all your pieces, and remember you will get a grade for craftsmanship and cutting. Um, if you don't have glue, that's okay because we can kind of fake it, but you're going to take your background and you're going to arrange the pieces. And this is where the space part of it is going to come in. So for space, we know that we have three different grounds and you will remember this from second grade. We talked about this a lot. The foreground is at the bottom of the paper. So if you notice, Things are very close. They appear to be close. They're low on the paper. They are large and they are dark, okay? Things in the middle ground, which is in this case, the middle kind of in between the edge of the paper and the, um, the vanishing point. The vanishing point is going to be actually the background, okay? So, the middle ground is a medium distance mi middle of the picture and medium value, so medium size, right? And then the background is gonna be right here. It's going to be right under the horizon or in this case, right by the vanishing point. 
things are far very small and they're the lightest okay so we are going to arrange our pieces so that we are showing space my largest piece doesn't really make sense next to my farthest away point which is my vanishing point it makes more sense anywhere on the outside of the page so anywhere there and if I don't have glue I can just place it and snap a picture of it so if I were to put this smaller cone right next to it it doesn't really help with the illusion of space but if I were to move the smaller cone closer to the vanishing point in some way that makes more sense visually and I want you to notice that my shadows are on the same side as each other and my highlights are also on the same side so this sphere is somewhat big so I'm going to put it around the outside somewhere how about right there to balance the picture again uh oh my shadow is on the opposite side of this one so I'm just gonna spin it so my shadows on the same side and then my cube is teeny tiny I'm gonna put that right by my vanishing point and I'm gonna move it to there because there was really nothing in that corner then I will snap a picture and send it to Mrs. TH through Google Classroom. Reach out to me if you need any help. Make sure that you check that rubric to see um, uh, to see how you can get your best grade. Remember, it can be done in color. You can add those extra lines if you want to. I'm looking for 3D forms with value, cut out carefully and glued into the space that you created last time. Try to make sure your shadows are all on the same side and that you arrange your areas so that you have big ones in the foreground, medium ones in the middle ground, and your teeny tiny ones in the background, which is actually the middle of the paper. All right, good luck and be creative. I can't wait to see what you hand make.